Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. What are you, so-called Mexican? You're not, do, hey, bruh, right here on the scooter. Do you see us, hey, my man right here in the hat. Do you see yourself on this side right here? You, you know you're from the tribe of Ishakar. Hey, come here for a minute. 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 Ten and twelve. Do it right. So you know you're from the tribe of Ishakar. All praises. All praises. So with you understanding that you were an Israelite, right? Do you know why the uh, Spanish conquistadors came over, came against our people in 1492? To, all right. What was the prophecy? For what? So with you knowing that you're from the tribe of Ishakar, you know you're supposed to be keeping God's commandments. Are you keeping God's commandments? You try most of them. Which one? Which commandments do you know? Uh, you have to keep our beard. Okay. You can't be small shape. Okay, what else? You can't eat pork, shrimp. Okay. Uh, you can't have sex or marriage. Good. Uh, uh, there's more commandments. Do you, what, what do you, how do you, what do you celebrate? What, ho what holidays do you celebrate? So what currently, do you celebrate? Do you celebrate the biblical holidays that are required? I'm trying to keep them too. Okay. Okay, here, let me show you something. Read what you got. 12, yeah, 47. In that servant which knew his Lord's will. So you are that servant. The servant of the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. What's your name? Sergio. Sergio. So it said that, Serge, that servant or Sergio, read. In that servant which knew his Lord's will. And prepare not himself. So it said, Sergio, which knew God's will. What's God's will? I'm talking that one. I don't know. Give me that. Hey, come around. Come to the front so I can see you, bro. I want to deal with you. I want to deal with you. Sergio. My name is Uriel, by the way. All right? So the Bible commands us to teach precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. So we're going to go to another scripture to explain to you what the will of God actually is. All right? Read what you got. The book of Psalms. Chapter 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy what? Thy law is within my heart. So God's will is his laws. His laws, his commandments, okay? So follow me. All right, we're going to go back to Luke now. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. So Sergio, which knew God's will, that you're supposed to be keeping the commandments. As you say, you can't celebrate the Wigan holidays. You got to celebrate the biblical holidays. Okay, you can't eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. Right, the beard, you can't bulge your head. You, you, you know of the Lord's will, right, and that you have to keep it. Read. And prepare not himself. So you know this gospel. You know that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Ishakar, but you don't prepare yourself. You don't actually practice in the application of the law. You're not actually keeping the commandments. You see what I'm saying? Read. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. So what does that mean? Shall be. Does it mean that God gonna be Christ gonna be whipping you on your back with a bull whip? It means that your punishment, when Christ returns, your punishment is gonna be far more severe than our brothers and sisters that don't know. Y'all both gonna get punished, but he's gonna deal with you more severely because you actually knew of this glorious gospel. You know what I'm saying? 
So give me that in Hebrews 10. Because you know you're an Israelite, so I'm going to show you a few steps that you need to do in order to actually start this walk. In order actually to be delivered out of this place. Because you know destruction is coming to America. You know that you are from an uh, Israelite from the tribe of Ishakar. You have a heavy job and responsibility. You know what your job is as a man? Huh? To lead. To lead who? To lead your people. So what does that mean that you have to do in order to get out here to teach your people and to lead your people? What do you have to do? Be a leader. Yeah, so you have to come join, get built up in the scriptures because in the 12 tribes of Israel, nine of them are northern kingdom. So you got a, a very big job to do. We need help. We The most high is calling. He needs you, man. You know what I'm saying? The most high did not give you of his will for no reason. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. For not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. As the matter of some is. So the Bible says that we don't forsake the assembling or the congregating, the coming together, the righteous fellowship of ourselves together. Right? That is a commandment that we must fellowship on the, the new moons, the Passovers, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Pentecost, the Sabbath days. Which is every week we come together and uh, assemble or congregate. Right? Read. But exhorting one another. But doing what? But exhorting one another. So the Bible said that we must exhort one another. In order to exhort one another, that means you have to be in communication with other Israelites, with other righteous brothers that understand the faith, understand the times that we're in, understand who we are as a nation of people and our job that we have to do. Show you that you have to be able to begin to congregate with somebody. You see what I'm saying? That's the only way that you're going to be able to exhort yourself as, as you see the day approaching, like the scriptures say. Read. In so much the more. And so much the more. So it's more than just congregating. It's more than just exhortation. It's about correction. It's about learning. It's about building. It's about growth. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said so much the more. Read. As ye see the day approaching. What's that day that's approaching? The day. So what should you be doing? Being prepared. And you joining because you know you're an Israelite is you starting to prepare yourself and if you don't do that what awaits for you you death death you see what i'm saying give me that corinthians all right do you know all right i'm gonna show you another commandment all right make it plan i'm gonna show you another commandment my brothers and sisters come 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 we came out here for y'all we we gonna be out here for hours we ain't got nothing better to do to come in here and talk to you to show you the truth in the bible about who you are all right y'all come on uh yeah give me that i want you to listen to this sergio right all praise the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye fathers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. So Paul said, keep the ordinances as I deliver them unto you. Because he got the ordinances from who? From Christ. That's why he said, follow me as I follow Christ, and keep the ordinances or the commandments we about to read, that I give unto you. So what we're about to read is more of God's commandments that you must apply being an Israelite from the tribe of Ishakar. All right, read. Verse 3. But I will have you know that ye, that, but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the Bible says the head of every man, so-called black man, Hispanic man, so-called Mexican man, Haitian man, the head of the 12 tribes of Israel is Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. That's right. You understand? So you understand Jesus Christ is not a white man. All right? My brother understand that? And you uh, Israelites, y'all must understand that Jesus Christ is not a white man. Right. Jesus Christos is negro. Mary was black. Joseph was black. David was black. Solomon was black. This is your book. But for far too long have you been taught in your uh, Catholicism that God loves everybody. Far too long have you been taught in your Catholicism, in your mosque, that Jesus Christ is coming to save everybody. And that's not the truth. He only chose the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And that's everybody out here that I, that I see. Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So Christ is your head, he's your leader. He's who you reverence to, all right? He is your dictator, right? The head symbolizing leadership. Christ is your leader, read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the leader or the dictator or the uh, authoritative figure of the woman is who? So is it 50-50 with God? No, 
that's something that we must teach in our communities because society has it set up as to where we're gonna give the woman the benefits we're gonna give her the power we're gonna give her the jobs but in you our people coming back as uh, the Israelites from the tribe of Ishakar, we got to reset that standard to gain back the authority in our households with us leading our nation, but it begins with our own house, having our women and our wives and children in subjection, like the scriptures say. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is who? Is God. Is God. So Sergio, what's the order? What's the order? You didn't name Christ. The Most High God, the Heavenly Father, Christ, man, woman. All right? That's the order. Read. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. Let me prophesy. Every, so the Bible says every man praying or prophesying. All right, we're going to go again, precept upon precept. To explain to you what the spirit of prophecy is, what is what is actual prophecy, right? Read the book of Revelations, chapter nineteen, verse ten. Bring it and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, "See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God." For the testimony of Jesus. For the testimony of Jesus, the understanding of Christ, the commandments of God. When we're coming to you, ministering to you out of the Bible, the understanding of Christ is what? Is the spirit of prophecy. Is the spirit of prophecy. So with you getting Christ's testimony or the understanding of Christ right now, are you in the spirit of prophecy? Right now, you are. Because you are because we're ministering to you. The spirit of Christ. You see what I'm saying? So you're in the spirit of prophecy as well. All right, now let's go back to uh, Corinthians. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. And every man praying. Every man praying. Or prophesying. Ministering out of the scriptures or having the scriptures ministered to him or her. Right? Having his head covered. Having his what? Having his head covered. Hey, all praise. There you go. Hey, get that brother round of applause, man. Get that brother round of applause. All praise. All, so you get it. But that's a commandment. Hey, but look, give me, I'm gonna show you that. Leviticus 13. Leviticus, I'm gonna show you something, bro. Cause you know you can't bulge your head. Right, right. So I'm, I'm gonna show you something. Cause you like you rubbing like, oh man, you know. Hey, let me show you what the scripture. You clean. You clean, right? And the scriptures dictate because you know, when you read Leviticus 21 and 5, it says, Thou shalt not make baldness. Meaning you're not supposed to deliberately grab a razor and shave off the head, the hair on your head purposely. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if, what if your hair is falling out? You're becoming bald. 1340, excuse me. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verse 40. And the man whose hair is falling off his head. So the man whose hair is falling off his head, he's becoming bald. He's getting up in age, some, sometimes not even up in age. His hair, maybe genetics, his hair is beginning to fall off his head. He is becoming bald. Read it again from the top. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verse 40. And the man whose hair is falling off his head. Is that true, Sergio? Read. He is bald. He is bald. Why are you bald? Read. Yet he is clean. Yet he is clean. Why? Because he did not purposely shave it off. So that means what? You're supposed to keep what you can grow. That don't mean you gotta look all crazy, have a big pat sitting in your head. Yeah, you can trim it down low, but you can't bald it and shave it off. All right, give me Numbers 15. I'll praise you in the spirit. Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto Sergio. Read. And bid them that they make them Fringes in the borders of their garments. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Read. Throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Right. So, Jeremiah 17 and 4. So, according to the Bible, the Israelites were and are commanded to wear fringes. So that's a, and your repentance, that's another commandment that you have to come back to. Because when you look here on these signs, remember the uh, so-called Native American Indians? 
Right, you ever saw uh, like the old ancient pictures and ever wonder why they wore them tassels or what could be perceived as shingles Jesus. on the end of their clothes? Right, look at these pictures here. Like how they would, uh, what they would call them, they wear uh, the tassels. Yeah, these bottom pictures here. That's because they are the Israelites. Let me read back in Numbers 15 that was given that commandment. So it's more than just a fa fashion statement. Our brothers and sisters understood who they were. You see what I'm saying? But what happened? 1492 happened. Christopher Columbus happened. And when they came over here, North, Central, South America, they destroyed our people. They destroyed your heritage. They took from you your commandments of God. They gave you names like Martinez, or Arroyo, or Jimenez. You know what I'm saying? They gave us names like Jackson, Montgomery. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Harris, whatever, right? But it's, the Bible dictates that me and you are the same people, that we went through the same oppression. Y'all went through it first in 1492. All right, read what you, uh, what you got. All right, I want to show you that. Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage. So the Bible said, was, the Lord was speaking to Jeremiah. He said, thou thyself, meaning even you, Jeremiah, shall discontinue from your heritage. Understanding what happened to our people in 1492, have you say that, you have been, that our people have been discontinued from our heritage? We have. Right? And we were discontinued from our heritage. Why? Because we broke God's commandments. So now in these latter days, it's time for us to what? Come back to what? Being an uh, Israelite from the tribe of Ishakar. Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Isaiah 11. About, um... So, what do you think about... Because just a few weeks ago, right? We had a whole bunch of riots going on. And it was all this stuff. Black against brown and little village. They was, you know... What they say? The GDs was riding through there? Or whatever was going on. Right? Uh, can you, what, do you, what do you think about that? You said they're killing themselves? Right. Okay. So you see why it's important for you to join this truth and this gospel? You see what I'm saying? Because when we come out here to the uh, Northern Kingdom neighborhood and they see you, they'll be sometimes, because our people are in their ignorance, right? They'll, they may be more receptive or more willing to listen so we can raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. So you have a mighty job to do. That's what I'm saying, because I can go through, I can address the commandments here that I see, but you know you are Israelite already. Right. You know what I'm saying? We out here, to say, the scriptures say go to the lost sheep. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? You can better your walk, but you ain't all the way lost. You know who you are. Right. You know what I'm saying? So with you, it's time to go. It's time to move. All right, read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation. So the ensign is the Bible, meaning he shall set up a standard. That's why in Jeremiah says set up the standard against Babylon. You want to say what I'm saying? Meaning that the Bible, truth will spring forth in the earth when you read Psalms. The Bible will be the standard of all the earth. But it said, read it again. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. And shall assemble the outcast of Israel. And shall assemble the outcast of Israel, meaning the other lost and dispersed Israelites all throughout the four corners of the earth. Yes, Jump sir. down to the one about uh, Judah shall not envy. Yeah, give me that. Verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim. I would say, who is Ephraim? The Puerto Ricans. But in this context, it's referring to the northern kingdom. It just says Ephraim because Ephraim was the head tribe of the northern kingdom. Judah was the head tribe of the southern kingdom. But it's talking about Ephraim, uh, Gad, Reuben, Issachar. It's talking about the whole northern kingdom. All right. Read it again. Verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim. So the envy of Ephraim, meaning Ephraim, the northern kingdom, has a type of envy, a type of jealousy. Against who? Let's see what the Bible says. Read the envy of also Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. What does the Bible say? Ephraim shall not envy Judah. So the Bible says, Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Shall not envy Judah. And what shall Judah not do? Judah shall not vex Ephraim. We're not supposed to vex you. We're not supposed to frustrate you. So what is God telling us between the northern and the southern kingdom? Bring it out. Unity. Yep. But stay right here first. But unity amongst our people. But when you read the will, have you ever read the Willie Lynch letter? 
is very heavy. It talks about how he separated the light skin from the dark skin, the young against the old. Only difference is one slave ship went that way, one slave ship went this way. They called me African American. They called you Mexican. They gave me Baptist church. They gave you Catholicism. You see what I'm saying? But now today we, me and you, biblical blood brothers fight against each other when we have a common problem. You see what I'm saying? So we need to come back and unite as the nation of Israel like this Bible says and keep God's commandments. You understand? Read. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. No, uh, know that I'm an Israelite and don't do nothing. Gather yourselves together. So who you gonna gather with? The 12 tribes of Israel. I ain't saying you gotta join us, but the, according to the Bible, you gotta gather yourself with somebody. That's, it's a, for you to know that you're an Israelite and not do that, that's unbiblical. That's, un, that's, not, that's not biblical. You see what I'm saying? So in, to, in order to increase your faith and, 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 and your um, zeal in this walk, your understanding in this walk, you have to join with somebody. Right. All right? So read that again. Gather yourselves together. Yay! Gather together. O nation, not desire. O nation, not desire. Because the blacks and Hispanics, so-called, we are undesired people. Y'all been undesired since 1492. Just in recent history, we've been undesired since 1611, to be exact. You see what I'm saying? So with everybody in the earth hating us, what should we do? Unite, unify. That is what God is, is trying to tell our people in these last days. That we're not supposed to have that hatred, that envy, that jealousy against each other. Oh man, them damn Mexicans, man. No, bro, we brothers. We, we can't roll like that. All right, go to Ezekiel 37. Uh, matter of fact, drop that. Give me uh, Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6. Isaiah, getting more back to your purpose. Right, because before I came to this truth, I didn't know what my purpose was. I was all over the place. I was, I was like a, a football, a basketball player and a football player. And I was real good at football. And I had an injury. Then I wanted to be a lawyer and political science. Then I wanted to be a rapper. Then I wanted to be a, 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 a poetry paint artist and I was applying to Pratt in damn Brooklyn, New York. I was just all, I didn't have, I did not have no purpose. Especially as a so-called black man in the earth. Just like y'all, Hispanic men, so-called Hispanic man in the earth. What is our purpose? What are we supposed to be doing in this life? The Bible tells us keeping God commandments as well as Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 6. And he said, it is a like thing that thou shouldest be my servant. So Sergio, God has called you to be his servant because you know you're from the tribe of Ishakar. You are the servant or the son of the living God. You are above every other race on the face of this earth. You know God is not about equality, right? He deals with his chosen people and everybody else is heathens or slaves on the damn loose and they under your feet according to the Bible. So he has called you to be his servant, his most prized possession. Read. To raise up the tribes of Jacob. What is Sergio supposed to be doing? To raise up the tribes of Jacob. To raise up the tribes of Jacob. First Maccabees 3. What does that mean? Explain to me, what did you get from that verse? What are you supposed to be doing? Getting all my people together. How? Getting all of your people together in Christianity and Catholicism and Islam and Black Lives Matter? The 12 tribes. Right. And when you get them together as the 12 tribes, what are you supposed to be teaching them? Mm. The laws of God. The laws of God. So you do, you do you realize the severity of what God has called you to do? That's why I opened up with Luke. That servant that knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, your punishment is going to be far greater. That's right. right? And, I'm, and I want to read you something in Matthew as well, just to... It should inf incite the fire in you to, to, to join, to understand and really start keeping these commandments that you got to help. You got to help further this gospel and raising up, especially the northern kingdom. That's right. Especially the northern kingdom. Read. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decay estate of our people. So would you say the northern kingdom, uh, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, do you see ourselves in a decayed estate? Why so? Right. The uh, police brutality. We are the first hired, last fired, 
poor immunization, poor education. They shut down all the schools in our neighborhoods. They put red light cameras in all of our neighborhoods. They put garbage food, fast food in all our neighborhood. They took y'all land, but else and then call you an illegal immigrant, called you the alien when according to Isaiah 2, they're the alien. That's oppression, right? What we have went through when we was brought over here in slavery is called slavery. What y'all went through is called colonialism. Do you know the difference? Slavery is when what the so-called blacks went through when we was brought to another land and had to work the land and render up those resources to somebody else. Colonialism is when you gotta work your own damn land and give all your resources that's already yours to somebody else. Bring it out. Yeah, we gonna get that too. All right, read what you got. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. I wanted to explain that, that you have a great job to do in raising up the decayed estate of our people to help us, help us change the mindsets of our people because a lot of our people today think that they're free. Bring it out. Think that this is okay, this is how life is supposed to be. Have uh, been discontinued from their heritage like we read. That don't even understand their history that this is their land. So how the hell are they the damn immigrant? You the damn immigrant, white man. Right. You the damn Bible, the damn devil the Bible speaks of, white man. Bring it out. You came over here and you slaughtered over 77 million Native American Indians to gain this land. You slaughtered over 300 million so-called Hispanic tribes to gain this land. You slaughtered over 100 million blacks and drug us over here to establish the backs of America. The foundation of America. The Bible says, woe unto the bloody city. So we gonna come in here and we gonna teach our people that we are the Israelites, that we are God's chosen people, and your days are numbered. America will burn with normal thermal nuclear fire, and that two thirds of our people here will die because they do not want to hear the truth, and they want to reject God's commandments. They want to walk hand in hand with the oppressor. They love Babylon. They love sin, and they hate truth. They don't want to be the sons of God, so they're gonna die with the devil. Read what you got. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. So that's your job, bro. It's to restore the decayed estate of your people. And if you don't do it, God is going to deal with you severely. That's, that's like a spit in his face. Like, you know what? I, I, I have something better to do to, to restore my people. Read. And let us fight. For our people in the sanctuary. Meaning fight spiritually, right? Fight with the commandments of God that shall set us free. I want to leave you with one more uh, scripture. Give me Matthew 25. The book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered us unto me two talents. Behold, I have gave two other talents besides them. So this is talking about the Christ who gave talents to the Israelites. Meaning you multiply your gifts or multiply your talents in the body of Christ. You see what I'm saying? So that is called a faithful servant. Read. Verse 23. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. So you want to be called that good and faithful servant, meaning you know the understanding that you have now and that you grew it and went out and taught your people and did what you had to do to raise up your nation from that decayed estate, like the Bible say. Jump down to the one with the other brother. Verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said. And he that received that one talent that knew he was an Israelite, that knew he was supposed to be keeping God's commandments, that knew you were supposed to be out here raising up your people. Because think about it, you even fighting against the madness or you contributing to it. And if you're not fighting against it, that's being lukewarm. Lord said he's going to kill you for that. I mean, you got to choose a side that you want to be on. So read that again. Then he which had received the one talent. You know you were Israelite from the tribe of Issachar. Read. Came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. Lord, I knew that you were serious. I knew this Bible was serious. I knew you was coming. Judgment day was coming. I knew who I was. I knew my history. Read. Reaping where thou hast not sown. Meaning bringing judgment. Right? Read. And gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent. I did what? And hid thy talent. But I sat on it. I didn't do nothing with it. 
I didn't go out here and teach my people. I didn't go out here and raise my people up. I didn't join when the brothers was right there in purple. I didn't join, I didn't call. I didn't come in as an Israelite from the tribe of Ishakar, understanding the severity of raising up my people, knowing that we nine tribes. Bring it out. That once we raise up, northern kingdom is over. That's right. That's right. That we're getting the kingdom of heaven and we're getting the hell out of slavery. Right. With me understanding that, I just sat on it. I didn't do nothing. I really didn't give a damn. I had something better to do. Read. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Are you afraid to get out here and raise up your people? I know you. I can tell in your spirit you're not afraid. So after this, it should be nothing that's holding you back. Right. Because the scriptures say, I delayed not and made haste to keep thy commandments. Read. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. So the man that did that, that hid his talent, that didn't do his job, Christ called him what? Thou wicked and slothful servant. Man, do you want the Son of God to look you in your face and say that to you, man? You don't. Read. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gathered where I have not straw. Meaning you knew I was going to come back and require of you, right, what the talent I gave you, the understanding that I gave you. Break it out. You knew I was going to come back one day and, and, and judge you on that. Read. Verse 27. And thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Meaning not what you knew, you could have just went and gave that understanding or gave that talent to the body. Gave it to another Israelite, another righteous brother and sister. Let him flourish the talents instead of just sitting on it, not doing nothing with it. You see what I'm saying? Read. Verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him. Do what? Take therefore the talent from him. Take his spirit from him. Take his understanding from him. Take his knowledge from him. Everything that you could have contributed to the benefiting and raising up this nation. Read take it, out. strip it from him. Christ said. Read. And give it unto him which have ten talents. And give it to the faithful brother. Read. For unto everyone that have shall be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he had. And cast ye the unprofitable servant. Do what? And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. What does that mean? Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. What does that mean? Yes. Read. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You don't, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You don't want that, brother. You don't want that to be your lot. You don't want that to be the, the, the end all be all for you in your life. So the message is, because you know you're Israelite, brother, come join us. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.